Hey guys, Joe Garth here, creator of Brushify.io. I wanted to change up the format a little bit this time uh, to kind of show you guys a little bit uh, more of my workflow and make sure that you guys can kind of follow it step by step uh, so that you can see my clicking, you know, exactly what, I'm, what buttons I'm clicking, exactly what I'm doing all the way through this sort of hour long video. And uh, yeah, I really want to show the process of bringing a height map from World Creator into Unreal Engine and sort of using the Brushify tools uh, to help with that process. So like the auto material and, you know, some of the assets, the modular assets that I sell with the Brushify packs. So if you like this kind of content, uh, don't forget to subscribe, uh, hit the subscribe button below and uh, check out Brushify on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. And uh, yeah, enjoy the video. Cheers. Hey guys, so I'm Joe Garth, and in this tutorial, I just wanted to cover the basics of getting a height map from World Creator into Unreal Engine 4. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off in Unreal Engine 4 uh, with one of my example scenes. And this is, uh, this is the multi-biome landscape scene, and it comes with uh, the Brushify Environment Shaders pack. This is the pack that this one comes with. Uh, I think you can get this one, it's about 10 euros, so uh, if you don't have this already, uh, this is basically a pack that comes with a landscape auto material and uh, a few additional assets and stuff to kind of help you get set up with landscapes in Unreal Engine 4. So it comes with a pretty sophisticated shader that will sort of, you help, sort of help you get started uh, with landscapes in Unreal and it will help you with the automatic texturing of terrain and uh, stuff like that. So. Uh, that's something I, I definitely recommend, uh, something similar to that if you're going to be following this tutorial. Of course, you can use other landscape uh, auto materials as well. Uh, that's just the one that I've created and uh, the one that I recommend. So, so the very first things first is we're just going to start by uh, taking this scene and I'm just going to save a copy of it. So I'm just going to go up to File, Save Current As and I made a folder here, world creator example. I'm just gonna name this world creator example. And this will just save the new version of the map, uh, which will be one that we can now work in. So yeah, th so now I have this new version. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete this background set of mountains because we don't need those. And let's just strip this down to the basics. So we've just got a sky dome a uh, few different controls for the lighting and atmosphere. Uh, we've got some camera actors here. I'm just gonna delete because we don't need those. And uh, what else? Oh, and the landscape. There is a couple of procedural foliage volumes, but we might need to use those later. Um, those are used for sort of generating rocks. So I'll go over that in a bit. And yeah, and then you've got the main landscape. So really not very much in the level here. And you can see that this is all just a very kind of basic starting point. Okay, so the next step is going to be bringing a height map in and uh, getting it onto this landscape uh, entity that we have here in Unreal. So yeah, the program I'm going to be using in this tutorial is going to be World Creator. Uh, so World Creator is yeah basically a program that lets you generate height maps very very rapidly uh, in real time on the GPU which is amazing because it means you don't have to do any sort of uh, baking processes that you know take a long time. I'm gonna make a very, very basic example. The first thing I usually like to do in World Create to start off is just adjust the noise height range. So if you go up to the top here and you go to the first, it kind of works in a very kind of A, B, C kind of way, similar to Unreal, uh, where the first thing you tweak is the surface, then you texture it, then you add objects. Uh, and you know there are some and post effects and you know it's basically a, a very kind of one two three four kind of cycle so the very very base of it is the surface base parameters and this is the, what we're seeing right here if we can kind of if we kind of change those you can see that we're adjusting the kind of noise on the overall terrain so this noise height range is basically the amount of kind of general repeating noise pattern that you get on the terrain so i'm going to reduce that down so it's there a little bit but it's almost almost uh, zero. Uh, you can adjust the strength of that too. And of course you can go too far with it, but you know, just a little bit of it can give some nice random detail. Uh, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to uh, the custom base shape and edit the shape here. We wanna make something that's sort of like an island or something that's a sort of, um, 
yeah, some, something that's sort of an island. You might notice here that there aren't enough of these to, to really make interesting shapes. You know, you can only just do like that kind of thing or, or like that and that, you know, it's not gonna be really interesting. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the uh, terrain width and length to uh, 4096. and then hit edit shape again. And now you can see there are more of these. Of course, you can go even higher. You could change the um, uh, the setting to 8192 and then you'll get a massive, um, massive terrain here. So this will give you way more options. These are almost like pixels, you know, that you can kind of lift up. And yeah, this is really, it can give you some cool control because you can kind of go in and, and lift up parts of this. And then you can actually decide to uh, you know, add a bit of noise to the selection, uh, or you can, of course, take the um, make a kind of soft selection. So instead of sing choosing a single, you can kind of make like a circle, and uh, and then you can have a kind of radius. So here you can see you see I've got a radius around the cursor now, and as I move that up, it's it's selecting way way more. And uh, of course, I can type in a value here that's a little bit higher, 1,500. And now I've got a quite big radius. And you can adjust the fall off of that radius too. So you can see here that the edges, you know, the middle ones are getting uh, a bit more, uh, the, the, the middle ones are getting a lot more, a lot of power and then the outside ones are, are kind of um, reduced. They don't, have, they don't have quite as much. And uh, yeah, and so I'm just gonna start like be creative, you know, start building some little island shapes. And these are really like the overall environment, you know, this is the overall bigger picture landscape we're looking at right now. So we're we're sculpting whole islands. So we don't wanna go absolutely nuts with, you know, with the mountains or, or creating very, you, you know, we don't wanna create really, really detailed shapes at this point. We wanna create sort of unique overall shapes. I think this noise is, is working quite well for that. Um, I'm gonna make the radius of my brush a little bit smaller and then make some kind of edges to the mountains. Usually there's a kind of shape to a, an island that we can kind of try to get some, you know, try and get some interesting shapes that aren't too blocky and are kind of, yeah, realistic or useful. And you know we're going to pass this through some filters later that are going to make it even more realistic. So we don't have to really care too much just about the general shapes and trying to make those look kind of interesting. And and of course you can you can use the W S and D keys to kind of zoom around and and just like you would in a first person shooter, you can use and just like in Unreal, use the uh, right mouse button to look around with the camera and the was keys to to move around and I think that is the best way to control the 3d viewport to be honest I think it's gonna take it's taking some people in the industry a long a long time to get that into their their heads but you know it's it is becoming an industry standard at this point and I think that it's only a matter of time before even 3d modeling packages uh, sort of shift to this um, this way of working because it is really really nice even when you're modeling um, so yeah, so the next uh, so the next step would be to, once you have something like this overall shape, I'm just gonna make a few little off. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna think about this, how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna structure this island and how I'm going to make this because I think it's gonna be pretty cool if I do stuff correctly so i do want to have one part of the island that has something like a sort of a uh, bit of a volcanic section so i think i'm going to really boost the height of one part of the island and with the height just to make sure that, that it's not too steep you know just there there's got to be a kind of yeah okay so that's overall elevation and the next step, like I said, you kind of go in order in World Machine in World Creator. So, like I said, you kind of go in order in World Creator. So the next step is the filters. So this is basically a, a part where we can add uh, filters to this height map. So I'm going to click Add Layer, 
uh, so yeah, go surface filters and then add layer. And we're just going to call this one uh, mountains. Very basic. Hit add. And here you can see you've got a bunch of different options for filters. So here's all the stuff, you know, like typical Voronoi pattern, smoothing, noise. You know, that's all the sort of like uh, generic ones, I'd say. And uh, there, are some, there are some more advanced ones for sort of designs and roads and rivers, that kind of stuff. Um, some cool effects. But what I'm going to go for is, uh, I think I'm going to go for ridged. And I'm going to go with small, sharp ridges. And see how that looks. So hit OK. So you can see immediately it's taken that sort of basic height map that I had. And it's already, you can see the difference. It's already started to give me some cool kind of mountain peak shapes, which are just looking amazing already. You know, that that's already already great and very natural looking already looks like almost like real mountains so uh, so that's a really good base uh, to work from and you know once you once you have something like this uh, you can of course run some more filters over the top of it and sort of play around uh, there are some interesting ones like this one's like rocky plateau so it's more if you just want to have like a little less of a defined um, little less of a sort of defined ridge, but you just want to have some sort of, um, it's almost like chalk. It's really, it's really fine. It's more soft, like stone erosion, but yeah, you can always play around with it and, and see which ones look more natural. So I think a bit of that's going to be interesting. And, uh, yeah, so now I've got, I think pretty convincing kind of shapes for my, my islands here. And I've kind of designed this in a way that down here will be the, the ocean. So I'll just, I'll just kind of bring the water level up and you know these sort of parts will become uh, islands in Unreal Engine. So we're going to see how that looks and of course you can always go back to World Creator, adjust some things, bring it back into Unreal uh, and kind of go back and forth and so on. So there's no, uh, you know, it's very creative and it's very sort of like there's no, it's not a one-way street. Uh, it's all, you know, it's always a two-way street. It's always a way that you can, you can manipulate back and forth and, and just import, export and you know, make sure that uh, you could do that until you get it right, pretty much. So yeah, our height map here looks just about ready to export. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to reduce the resolution from 8K uh, to 2K. And the reason for that is I don't think that we really need 8K uh, resolution um, in order um, to, uh, to have our sort of base kind of global height map because those kind of extra details are going to be added in by Unreal anyway, and we actually don't want to have uh, an 8K landscape in Unreal, because all of our texture, all of our textures and automated materials on top of the the terrain, they're going to give a lot more necessary detail. And if we if we have too many too much bumps and the sort of playable terrain, um, it's going to cause problems for players and it's going to slow down uh, the level. So if you really want a playable level. Uh, try and stick to a sort of slightly lower um, landscape, uh, overall landscape resolution uh, based on the amount of landscape that you have. So I have a very small map in this case, so it's not really necessary. So yeah, get your, uh, you can dial down your resolution when necessary. Uh, so I'm just going to export this 2K map and to do that I'm going to go hit export in the top right here and terrain height map. Make sure it's PNG 16 and best fit and then choose Unreal and hit export. Uh, that's one I made earlier, so just I'm gonna call it WC height map. Okay. So now that's exported, I'm gonna go to Unreal Engine. And uh, yeah, here's just where we left the other scene before. Uh, it's completely flattened out terrain. And yeah, just click on your well, let's start from scratch and just uh, I'll show you the process of building a new landscape because that's really important, I think. Um, just type landscape up in the modes panel, drag and drop landscape in. And uh, the first thing I'd usually do is just zero out the landscape on all of the location parameters. And then uh, you can see this one's set to 8K, but what I want to do is set it to 2K. So that's two kilometers across. Uh, sorry, that's two, two, two by two, two thousand um, meters by two thousand meters. Uh, if as long as I set the sections per component to one, 
Um, and yeah, you can you can just adjust that section size here. Uh, you you know you can make that 255, and then it will go up to 2K here. And you keep an eye on the total components. The more components you have, the more performance intensive the terrain is going to be. So keep that as low as possible. Try not to use that many uh, that higher resolution. The lower the resolution is, the more playable your terrain is going to be. And the objective here is to try and get the detail through texture work rather than through just pure, uh, you know, pure resolution. So the last thing to do is make sure your material is set to your auto material. So mine is set to the Brushify MI underscore landscape auto material and hit create. And it doesn't take that long to uh, to load up. So as long as you have like 2K, it's, it's usually pretty fast. 8K will take a lot longer and uh, usually you can slow down your PC. So just a warning there, the higher you go, the more you're gonna end up slowing your PC down. I find a lot of people struggle simply because they're taking the wrong approach of, of just throwing more resolution at landscapes and um, you know and that's not always necessary for their games even these sort of big open world games um, I don't think a lot of the time it's really necessary to have such massive landscape resolutions uh, especially when you see what I'll be doing with this next so yeah so once you have that um, you'll notice it's completely black that's totally fine go to the paints panel uh, the paint panel and go to grass and we're just going to make a weight blended layer and i made a layer infos folder there uh, i'm just going to call it grass layer info and hit ok and now you can see it's filled up with grass uh, you can see there's tiling there but we'll fix that in a second um, so to import the height map just go to the sculpt panel so to import the height map, just go to the sculpt panel and right down at the bottom, you'll see where it says target layers height map. Just right click and go import from file. And I'm going to choose my will create a height map. If it gives you some error messages about color PNG, just hit OK. And about the resolution disparity, just hit OK. If your height map comes in with really, really steep walls like this, it's actually a really, really easy thing to fix. Um, just go to your height map and uh, open up in Photoshop and then just go to adjustments and then levels and usually I just eyeball it but to be honest I just bring it down to somewhere like there you know where it's a little bit more gray it's not filling the whole range and uh, that's just going to squish the height map into something a little bit a little bit less of a, a range and then hit save it's just a PNG file um, of course you can also use like GIMP or um, um, any other paint software to do that so and then um, yeah right click go re-import same error messages and then okay so now the uh, height map is the correct or similar to a more correct or more realistic height I'm just gonna lower the fog a little bit here so we can see what's going on um, it's kind of got this dramatic fog effect going on from the previous map uh, so yeah, overall pretty good. Um, the There's a little bit of tiling going on. Uh, so to fix that, I'm going to just show you how to make your own uh, changes to uh, the MI landscape material um, to change some of the tiling settings. So you can see there's a lot of tiling going on there. This kind of all depends on, on where your player is going to be. Is your player going to be running around in the level? In which case, you don't have to be as drastic with the tiling because it won't be noticeable. Um, if there's a lot of, you know, running around top of mountains looking all the way down, then yeah, you will see it. If you are doing a flight simulator, well, then you're going to really want to, you know, change the settings drastically and, uh, you know, focus less on tiling it more, you know, so the player, so it looks good down here and, and you know, tile it much less so it looks good up here. So it all depends on the kind of game that you're making and what you're really... Uh, trying to produce. So first things first, I'm going to go to the MI landscape material and I'm going to open that up. And in here you can see that there are settings for uh, right here distance tiling. And these are several settings that control um, the various levels of detail. So there are three different levels of detail. One is this kind of global level of detail which you can see here. And as I control that and just adjust global tiling, you can see that there's that's the global tiling changing right there. 
So we can kind of adjust, you know, if it's a flight simulator, of course you want it to look good from here, then uh, way, way, way less is more. But, you know, if we want it to look good from just about like the top of the mountain, for instance, so we want that bit to look good. So we can tell it a little bit more and get away with it, I think. So yeah, something, something like, yeah, something like that. It's probably, probably good enough to get away with. And uh, and then the extra, uh, the next level of detail is, as you can see, I'm getting closer to this cliff wall. It's it's got another level of detail that's kind of fading in, and um, I'm gonna adjust that a little bit more. And then um, you can see that there's this next level. You can adjust the distance at which that level fades in by changing this global distance value. So if I make it twice as much, you can then see that now that extra level of detail is fading in much earlier, and you can start to see it more and more and more on the cliffs. Of course, the side effect of that is you're going to start to see the tiling more. So if I set it back to the default, you see you don't see the tiling there. But if I upgrade that value, you start to see the tiling. Um, and that's because basically the three levels of detail, global, macro, and detail, are blending into each other. So the top one right here is the global. And then if I move in further, you start to see the macro. And then if I go even further, you'll then get the detail. And this is where you actually see the actual grass and you know all the little, rock, little rocks and things. That is the most up close detail uh, texture. So yeah, detail, macro, global. And by sort of adjusting these parameters, you can usually get really good results. Uh, it's just a matter of you know tweaking it for your own uh, game and so now I've got these settings changed. I'm just gonna change. I'm gonna go to the landscape material I'm gonna save uh, a version of this uh, custom material uh, Into this one I made earlier. Uh, I'm just gonna save a version of this into my uh, World creator example. This is the map we're working on. I'm gonna save that into a folder called material overrides I usually make this little material overrides folder because you know, I want to store material instances in there that I've altered from my default ones, and I don't want to kind of you know affect the global the global material instances. So yeah, I just copy and paste, uh, copy that into that folder, and then once I've got that in there, uh, I can I can select my landscape and, and make sure I apply that one to the landscape instead of the the main one. So yeah, now I've got. My landscape from Will Creator, and oh, you can see there's a difference on the, on the shadows. That's kind of interesting, but you can of course extend that if you want. Um, but yeah, in general, I can now start to run around the map. Um, if you go to World Settings, and I've got the third-person game mode activated here, so I can just jump into the game. Gives it a second to give it a second to shit to update the shaders, but yeah, now I'm running around on this world creator map height map that I just imported, and um, I think it's looking pretty cool. So this is of course like the basis of you know the level that you would want to import. Of course, from here you can you know start to do things like tweak the lighting and the atmosphere, and um, you know get really try and get somewhere with. Let's see. If I can move that around. Yeah, I can get some really nice effects with the atmosphere. Uh, up here, I've got some rocks floating in the air from my previous level. I'm just going to delete those. Should have cleaned that up earlier. Um, and yeah, uh, you can start to you know start to experiment with different lighting and different uh, sky domes and and uh, different ways to make this look good. You can see the cloud shadows affecting everything there as well. So yeah, uh, so the next step that I'm going to quickly try to perform is I'm going to uh, show you guys a bit how you can kind of sculpt a bit onto this landscape because now you've got this kind of general island, um, you know, this might be the island that we want, um, but uh, of course, we want to add something cool, like we want to add some of the water. We want to make sure that we can actually level design on this thing now. So this is actually in a position where we can start to build a real environment that the player is going to be around, uh, rather than it just being a height map. So I think that's something that a lot of 
a lot of level designers and artists don't really kind of go from this point where it's a height map to being an actual level that people can run around. And you know, we've already got to that point a bit because we're, we're kind of running around it here with the player, but it's still just a height map, which is, it's fairly boring. Um, so let's go and add some of the extra uh, bits of spice that Brushify allows you to do really quickly. So yeah, if you go up to uh, content, and I'm just gonna go to Brushify, Materials, Water, and the Ocean folder, you'll find S underscore water. So just drag and drop that in and make sure the little lock is ticked and move the scale up to 10,000. Okay, great. So the accuracy of this is gonna depend on how big the scale is. I think 5,000 is actually enough or maybe even lower. It's maybe like 2,000. So yeah, if we go down onto the player's level, let's see if we can see any issues here. Of course, there's something else where we can change the tiling and uh, fix any issues in the material itself. So, you know, if you go into the ocean material, you can, of course, create again, you know, go into your map, create a copy in the material overrides folder, copy here, and then you got a little material override, drag and drop that onto the, onto the water plane instead and save it. And then you've got something you can now you can now change the material parameters here for the water uh, right here in this in this panel in this material panel without altering the global settings so you know if you if you think that there's too much tiling you can tweak the tiling settings here for the water as well so normal tiling that's the kind of bumps that are going on on the surface of the water you can see if we make it really really big it's going to look ridiculous and it'll kill the scale but yeah, let's make it a lot smaller. And uh, the other thing you can do is, which I noticed makes this a lot more realistic, is if you um, tweak the um, you tweak you tweak the certain bump settings. So only a little bit of normal bump is required. If you go too much more, the tiling becomes really really obvious, and and you don't really want that. You know, just tiling it a lot, and then also reducing the bump also helps so much so yeah it you know it can be really calm water and then and then you don't have to worry so much about like you know if, if it's tiling a lot like a, a lake of course I'm pretty sure there are more advanced water shaders for Unreal Engine this is just a very simple one um, that I use to kind of Block out environments and stuff. I'm, I'm sure if I'd make a real, you know, full game in Unreal Engine, I'd probably look into a much more um, involved water shader with, you know, maybe some waves, maybe some like more advanced uh, stuff going on. But I think this one is is quite good just for, you know, I think for art pieces and for showcases. If you want a simple water shader, I think it's it's good enough. It's at least good enough for my purposes. And uh, and yeah, so. Now we have something like a water. You might notice it's super, super transparent. That's because I was doing a tropical map before, and the settings were for that. But so I'm just gonna I'm gonna try and increase the fog density a little bit here. Um, you can do that by tweaking the fade distance. I'll make it a bit less. Yeah, like that. That just means it's gonna be a bit foggier. Yeah, you can also get this foam on the edges here, which is quite nice. Maybe I don't want quite as much of that. Yeah, that's good. And uh, yeah, I'll just hit save. So yeah, that's my water now. Oh, so that's one more thing I don't have to worry about quite as much is I've got water. So yeah, so let's see. The whole map now has, it's starting to look more like an island. Um, so what else does an island have? Uh, beaches. So I'm going to quickly go around my island now uh, adding beaches and to do that I'm going to go up to the modes panel and I'm going to go on to landscape and I'm going to go to paint and then right here the on the list you've got all kinds of paint layers for grass, more dry grass, desert, forest, dry forest, snow, beach, dunes, mud. So 
you can use those in a lot of different inventive ways. You know, they have different kind of colors and different um, styles of texture. And you could, of course, replace each of those materials with your own textures as well. So, you know, if you go into the um, materials folder uh, in landscape materials, you'll see here there are a bunch of material functions. And, you know, inside of each of those functions, uh, you, you've got all of the textures being defined there. So if we go into the grass function, that's the one we're you know, we're using on the terrain right now. Uh, you can see inside of there, it's uh, there are three different textures assigned for grass, and those are hooked up to global, macro, and detail. So you can change the global texture right there. You can change the macro texture and the detail texture um, of every single brushified paint layer. Um, there's even an example with the mud layer uh, for tessellation and roughness. So that's that's new in revision two. Uh, which I just launched last month, and um, yeah, it means you can you can of course add those kind of more advanced properties to paint layers if they're necessary. Uh, it just gives you the option. So yeah, uh, I'm going to start painting beach down, and uh, let's see how that goes. So yeah, first things first, I'm going to start by creating a weight blended weight blended layer, and then I'm going to choose the layer infos. Hit OK, and. Uh, yeah, I'm Gonna make sure I just save all of these layer infos because I want to make sure they're useful. And um, yeah, brush size just I guess just change it to the default because uh, maybe a little bit higher. That's a quite big beaches, but I don't want to take a long time doing all these beaches. To be honest, you know this is just something I'm just demonstrating. So uh, yeah, you can set the tool strength to something pretty high. And uh, it, when you first start sculpting, it does need to sh it does need to do a bit of shader compiling, but you know, eventually it's, you know, it, it will stop. Uh, so you don't want the whole of edges to be beaches. So you just want like, what is it? Like just the kind of some parts to be beaches. I guess there's a kind of pattern to it, which is that like areas that get kind of, sh um, uh, areas that are going inward, kind of inverted, they usually tend to be more beach-like. And then the areas that are kind of, you see I'm kind of leaving gaps on the sides. Um, that's just an artistic thing though. I mean, it's, it's just to kind of copy the nature. If you look at some reference, you'll, you'll see that some mostly beaches kind of follow this sort of pattern of like only on the interior bits. Could be wrong about that. There's all kinds of variation in nature, but I usually find this, this looks quite good. So that definitely looks like a, ooh, that looks like a really nice beach there. So let's just make that a really, like that's where I would go. You know, I would drive from that side of the island to, all the way to this side of the island to go on, just to go on holiday there. Um, okay, and then um, yeah, a couple more little beaches here. Maybe this is a, yeah, there's a little beach there. Take it all the way to the end. That's a nice beach. And then, yeah. And so, um, yeah, you can see what I'm doing. It's, it's not much to it, to be honest. It's, it's really easy. Um, and yeah, if we, not to get distracted, but if we go really close to this beach stuff, you can see it's actually got a nice detailed beach texture going on there as well. Of course, you know, when you when you have a bit more time, if you are really focusing on one of these areas, you'd go in and you kind of flatten out these beaches to make them look more like real beaches, because right now, you see it's just so sloped. That's nice that we've got a rock texture here as well that's an auto part of the auto material, so it's already, already giving it some texture, but it's not really a beach-like shape. So, you know, okay, just really quickly to do that, I would just go with the... Uh, I guess the smooth tool at first and I would just go in and smooth out that whole beach area and and maybe I would maybe I'd take also the flatten tool and choose like there and I would I would take the tool strength way 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 down on the flatten tool and I would just click like that you know just to get a little bit more flatness going around the edge of the beach but without you know ruining the kind of fall off into beach, you know, it still needs to look like a long beach. So yeah, now now I have a more beach-like appearance to this this coast line here. And yeah, so yeah, that's how I do beaches. Um, and yeah, and it's just the, you know, it's just the case of being a bit like. Um, now the reason I, I mean, the reason I have these tools and the reason I've developed these tools is because I am very lazy and I don't want to spend long, a long time doing everything completely custom from scratch. You know, I've, I've built these tools, you know, so that I don't have to do a lot of work when I work on these kind of quick Unreal Engine projects. 
and um, you know, so I can focus on the stuff that's really important, like um, you know, developing the assets and stuff. I don't want to be spending all day painting stuff in Unreal, and I'm still, you know, doing a bit of manual work. Like this is a bit of manual work in Unreal. Just realized I got my brush size way, way, way down. That's why it's taking me so long to paint. Um, but yeah, and uh, but yeah, th these automated tools they help so much, and and auto materials are just fantastic for for artists. So yeah. And of course, you know, it's the amount of time that you want to spend on on something like this. It really comes down to like, what is your game? Is your game something that uh, requires every single nook and cranny of an island to be, you know, perfectly, um, yeah, per perfectly artistically um, photorealistic? Or, you know, are you just trying to get somewhere that's, you know, a playable game that within a few weeks, because that's something that's possible too. I think a lot of people don't realize you can build a whole game in just a few weeks using these kind of tools. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna save this now. And yep, yeah, still recording. Okay, so yeah, so now I've got the beaches pl uh, placed. Uh, I think that's, that's really nice. Um, what I might do is just add a few more sort of biomes and uh, sort of variations of biomes uh, to the paint work. Uh, so that will help also further break up the tiling. So if I go on forest, I'm gonna add a weight blended layer. And again, make a new layer, layer info, hit save. And now I've got a forest layer. So if I paint this down, it sometimes it takes a bit of time to shade a compile. But you can see this is actually a different texture to the um, grass texture. So what's great about this is I can kind of blend this in with a slightly more green forest. Uh, so it goes from beach to grass to a forest. And now I can start to kind of blend in my, my forest. And this is just another way to break up lines. So you saw how before there is, you know, let's see if there's a really good example. Okay, so you can see some repetition going on in the in the materials here. So that's on the global layer. So I can break up that repetition really easy just by, you know, paint, paint a little bit here, that one. Paint a bit here, that one, you know. D let it flow with nature, but also <laughs> use it to cover up anything that shows that it's, um, you know, using some sort of uh, you know, computer generated tiling texture. So you've got, because you've got these different levels of of detailing, you know, they've got kind of manual sculpting. You've got this kind of automated process that already gave you this really nice kind of like overall effect, but now you can go in and, and you know, make it even, you know, just cover up your tracks a little bit with the manual sculpting tools, which is really great. So yeah, here we go. This. And of course, you know, this is also an auto material. So if you if you paint it onto slopes, you're still gonna get nice, like, you know, slope variations going on there. And I think this is a really nice green, saturated green for forest that, you know, helps to bring out a bit more this kind of um, lush green vibe. I'm not gonna paint too much in the shadows because it's, well, it's a boring area anyway, but. So yeah, uh, and now I've got a little bit of texture variation there. One of the big advantages of auto material is you can use the Brushify sculpting brushes. Um, you know, so if I want to, for instance, make a sort of a really cool eroded ridge here, right? Um, I can go to sculpt and instead of circle, I choose alpha and I've got a few different, because I've got all the Brushify packs on, on my PC, I've got all of the different Brushify sculpting brushes to choose from. Uh, I'll choose the one that comes with the Grasslands pack, um, which I think, yeah, so far you could you could do everything I've done here with just the Grasslands pack. You wouldn't need anything else. Um, uh, yeah, so the Grasslands pack comes with the Erosion brush. And if you just drag and drop that texture, it's quite big, it's, a, it's an 8K. Alpha brush, so it's got a lot of detail in there. Just in case you know someone is working in 8K and they really do need like a lot of detail, uh, I've got that built in. Um, 
So yeah, you can switch between the various texture channels to choose between sort of the different brushes. Uh, on the green channel, there's quite a nice, I think a really nice erosion brush on there. Um, and you can see as I push that around on the terrain, you can see it's actually, it shows up there. I can make it bigger. Again, same trick, just 99999. And um, then I just, just adjust the first number a bit. And then I can also rotate around. You can see it rotating there. I'm just gonna rotate it so it's right there. And you know, this is gonna give me something that's hopefully a really cool, and I just control and control and undo and then click and then control and undo and I just kind of keep doing that until I get interesting results. So yeah, what I could try and do is actually make the top of the mountain a volcano. Uh, let's see. So I choose the alpha brush there. These are cool because they actually have craters kind of thing, you know, like, or not a crater, but like an actual volcano, a volcano top, you know? Um, I think that blue one is the best one, or sorry, the alpha one. Yeah, so if you go to a place where it's like the middle of nowhere in the map, and then um, we do the brush, you can see there's actually a proper volcano shape that forms with this brush. But what I'll do, I think, is put it on the top Ha ha ha, yeah, just like that. And now our island has a volcano. That's the beauty of alpha brushes, it lets you just, you know, sculpt like that. Uh, the other brush I think that's also really, really useful is the one that comes with the canyons pack, um, which is great for these sort of ridges and canyon walls. Is this all the time? It's just so good for, the, for these kind of ridges. Especially sort of on the lead up to a, to a, a beach it totally makes sense to have some ridge line like that. It really feels cool when you have these kind of lines forming like that. And uh, yeah, let's put a couple of those down. I think this one also forms a kind of natural ridge line. So yeah, usually I just match up the rotation a bit and then hit, um, yeah, something like that. It's cool. It's always just a bit of back and forth with like control one. That's cool. But yeah, so so once you once you start, you know, getting into it, it's it's a bit of trial and error. But it's like a, it's just really good for level design. And then of course, you know, you can use these alpha brushes to stamp out some really cool erosion shapes or or give kind of a general idea. Like if you want to build like a corridor, uh, you can still go in and and use the you know the traditional sculpting tools. If here I wanted to, for instance, make I don't know like a let's see, like a house on the side of the mountain here. Just for instance, like if I wanted to make a building here on the side of the mountain, I can go in there and I can just quickly create that kind of shape here. And, uh, you know, that's someone's secret lair where they have, um, you know, all that stuff. And of course I can use the ramp tool. Just make a little ramp there. Um, the width I can alter as well. And you can just change this. And once you have something like that, you, you've got like a general shape and then just smooth it all out, you know, to your heart's desire. And uh, now I can run around and just run up that thing in the game. So, I mean, obviously you can do this very, very quick stuff for level design. The initial global shape of the island you know, we generated that in World Creator, but now we can go in and we can start, you know, fixing, you know, and, and, and well, building it into something that's a playable level. Um, and that's just a matter of time. Okay, so in this next part, I'm gonna be adding foliage to the island. And this is gonna help a lot because it's gonna sort of boost the, uh, the realism. And it's gonna mean that as we get closer, uh, you know, to certain areas, there's gonna be something to look at other than just sort of like grass. If you look closely, we do actually have some, you know, grass spawning around and, and some flowers, but those are just sort of like, uh, they're on the grass type system. So it's sort of like a procedural grass layer and it just kind of covers everything. Um, but uh, yeah, what we're gonna want to try and do is is place some more sort of distinctive meshes. So like trees, uh, some rocks, that kind of stuff. So in order to do that, we're gonna need to enable the procedural foliage system. And uh, that involves going up to edit 
editor preferences and then type foliage and make sure that you enable procedural foliage. You just have to tick this little box and then you might need to restart. Um, but once that's, uh, once that's done, uh, you're able to access the procedural foliage entity, which is a really useful volume. Uh, if you just type procedural into modes panel, you could drag and drop the procedural foliage volume. And uh, this is really just a box. So you can see there, it's just this little box that spawns and uh, here you've got control. If you go to the details panel, you've got control over the shape. So I'm gonna change the X and Y values to uh, about, let's see, let's try 10,000 at first. And uh, you can see I've now got a slightly bigger box. So if we wanna cover quite a large area, uh, say that I want a big, I guess, tropical rainforest to spawn around here. I'm just gonna cover this area in uh, in this big big volume. Let's try maybe three across. Oops, forgot zero. There we go. And um, it's a box shape, so all the foliage in there will spawn in a box shape. But we can clean that up later. So for this example, I think I'm going to use some uh, assets from the Brushify Tropical Pack. So yeah, to access those assets, I'm just going to go into the Brushify folder, and then meshes and foliage, trees, palms, and then you'll see that in this folder we've got all of the various meshes um, that are used for palm trees. So here I've got a few different variations. You know, you can uh, you know have, have different types of them. There's also these kind of leaves for the ground, um, which are also really useful. But I don't want to have to place all of these manually, so I'm going to use this procedural uh, foliage spawner. And uh, to do that, just hit click on the foliage spawner. And uh, if you see in, inside of Brushify, there is this folder, if you could Brushify, you can go procedural. And in the procedural fol fol uh, folder is foliage and then tropical. And here you can see I've got two options. I've got bu bushes and trees. And so here it says trees tropical. So just drag and drop the trees tropical procedural foliage spawner onto the foliage spawner. These are just folders that contain lists of meshes, and they're basically instructions for what meshes to uh, the the, um, the procedural foliage, uh, foliage spawner is going to spawn. And you know they have all kinds of rules in there about you know, the density and that kind of stuff. Uh, but all of those already come set up with Brushify. So all you really need to do if you if you've just got Brushify and you want to just start populating your island is just drag and drop that trees tropical um, procedural foliage spawner. Uh, onto uh, onto this and then uh, hit this button, re-simulate. Okay, so you can see it's already populated with a, the, the island with a few different spots where there are some palm trees. I think that looks pretty cool how we've already got some. You might want to uh, go in there and tidy up some bits, you know, maybe alter the direction of, of some of the uh, the palm trees on the edges uh, because you know some sometimes you'll want this effect where they're all sort of leaning uh, towards the ocean so sometimes you'll get the odd one that's not really leaning the right way and then just go in there and fix it um, this doesn't usually take that long and it depends on the game area the size of the game area that you've got but uh, I usually find that it can be done pretty quickly um, yeah, this one actually came out pretty well. I'll just rotate this one. But yeah, just I usually just go eyeball and eyeball and just fix any ones that I think look a bit weird or look like they're facing the wrong directions. And uh, yeah. So now we have a few, a few tropical ones. Just going to keep going around, placing these volumes in different directions and then hit simulate and uh, yeah this is how you can just rapidly start to create large sections of island with tropical palm trees re-simulate and you know if there is ever anything um, odd or anything like that 
you can always just go into the foliage panel here and use the selection. Uh, like here, I've got some, some that have spawned outside of there. Uh, so I've got a couple of options for that. Like one, I can go into the paint section and I can just select all of these, um, activate all of them so that they're being painted. And that, that's just like the paint mode and I can just delete them then. Or I can select individual ones using the select panel and, uh, and then of course, you know, move those around. Of course, that can take a bit longer. So usually I just, you know, I can either just scatter them or uh, delete them in the foliage panel. Uh, when it comes to scattering, this is the alternative method that you can use instead of procedural stuff. Uh, instead of using the procedural fol foliage spawner is you can just change the, uh, yeah, you can just basically paint down assets. So right now I'm painting those down and you can see they're actually quite thick. So if I change the density to a little bit lower, and then uh, maybe even change the brush size a little bit lower too. Yeah, and you can see that I've, you know, I could start to get some cool, slightly, you know, quite realistic, um, quite realistic uh, patterns going on. So you can also tweak the size. So that's what I was doing just there is just like change the size. And I think I had the size in the procedural spawner a little bit higher than the size on the paint one. So yeah, that's, that's cool. And just getting, just letting the random algorithm generate some cool shapes is, is always cool. Just dotting trees around in places and yeah. So let's go running around here then. Now we have some palm trees. Yeah, we also have a procedural uh, foliage spawner for the banana plants, which are also a vital sort of component of this ecosystem. Um, so if I just copy and paste that, uh, basically what I'm doing there is you're able to just, if you hold down Alt and then you drag, you can make copies of these spawners. It's really, really useful to do that. And that works with every entity in, in Unreal actually. Just hold down Alt and then, and then uh, drag and you'll get, uh, you'll get a new copy. Okay, so I'm gonna put the bushes banana plant onto there. And uh, yeah, now I'm gonna start placing down these banana plants. Let's see how good the spawner is. Okay, cool, so now it's, yeah, it's basically placing a few of these banana plants around the jungle. If you were painting both at the same time, that actually works really well because then you'll get like everything being painted at once. Uh, if you did it in two separate layers like I did, then you have a bit more control in, w in which you can you know, just decide where you need these plants to be. Remember that painting foliage, it's going to get expensive. So you don't want to maybe, you know, if there's a certain area of your level that you're really concentrated on, uh, you maybe want to place your plants there. Um, but, you know, if there's if there's just like, you know, some random areas that just aren't that important, maybe don't go crazy with the foliage and, and you know, put it everywhere. So I do, I do stress, you know, don't place so many foliage entities that it bogs down the, the whole game. Um, for instance, is the player really gonna go up here? And does that really matter if they end up here? If it doesn't, you know, if do there need to be all these banana plants here? Cause that's not really that performance. You know, that's not really that great for performance if you place a whole bunch of them there. Uh, if you never see it, if you can never really get up there as the player, or if the player is never supposed to even go up there, you know, it's not really necessary. Um, whereas like these parts down here where, you know, all the players are going to be, you know, by all means go crazy and just kind of cover those with, um, with some nice looking vegetation and helps to kind of like cover up the seams of, you know, especially, especially trying to place them around the bases of the trees. To, to make it feel a bit more grown in. That's really useful. It'll make it look a lot more realistic.
Okay, so let's walk around a bit on a new island. So the island is actually really massive. It's going to take me a while to walk all the way across. So I'm just going to zoom a little bit and walk again. There's a whole bay here. Uh, zoom a bit. Let's go to the other side over here. Yeah. So it's not bad for an hour or so's work. So now I'm going to concentrate on just like one area that I think looks cool and and try and yeah try and kind of increase the quality of it. Let's see what's a nice looking area. I think this area here is is really cool. So yeah, I'm going to work a bit more on this area and just kind of make something that's more like a picturesque landscape out of it. Um, I've got a nice camera angle here that I'm going to save a bookmark of. So I'm just going to set bookmark one. And then now when I hit one, it goes to that bookmark. And uh, yeah, so what I really like is this kind of tree here that's sloping downward. I'm going to bend it down. We can add a few more of these um, tropical plants to really thicken up a forest there. And uh, yeah, now I'm going to just adjust some of the lighting a bit. The sunset is nice, but it's a bit, it's, a, it's kind of missing a strong paradise style light that, I don't know, like, like I want, I want to make it feel like there's, you know, it's a more, more like a, a proper paradise. Um, so maybe more of a midday style lighting is better. And uh, let's see if I can, let's turn off the, the cloud shadows for a bit just to see how how we can make this look. So it's really just a case of playing with it. I think I need to fill in a bit more in the background there. And the, the light source, I think it, because it was sunset, it's a bit orange. So I'm just gonna reset it to only a tad orange. And then, um, so my sky dome is still a sunset sky dome. I think I'm gonna just drag one from, um, so I have the tropical map here. So I'm just gonna drag one uh, sky dome material instance from the tropical map and uh, Put that on there. So yeah, this is more of a daytime, it's more daytime lighting, uh, which I think looks a little bit nicer. And um, yeah, cool. Another thing I'm going to do is get rid of some of the exponential height fog that's in the air because I think it's a bit much. And then let's see if we can. Recreate the uh, recapture the sky dome. Okay, cool. Yeah, sky dome is super important. So if you can get that right and get the balance of that and this and the light source right, uh, it's really good. Uh, yeah, and then and now we have something a little bit more realistic, I think. Just keep tweaking it. Another thing that would be really good is to sort of scatter a few um, more bushes and dead leaves down on the ground because you know those are going to help a lot. So I'm just going to put a few more bushes around, and then let's do a dead leaves layer. Uh, we can find that uh, right here. So if we go into meshes, foliage, ground, um, sorry, trees, palms and then it's leaves ground. And inside the foliage, you've got two options. You've got leaves ground one and two, so it's two variations. And you can just drag and drop those into the foliage painter and then just paint those like any other, uh, like any other foliage. So let's just start scattering a few of these dead leaves around, especially underneath the trees. So that looks really, you know, there is a bit more like, you know, some trees have, lost some palm trees over, you know, some palm trees have lost their leaves over time. 
and um, that's making them a little bit more um, lived in. You know, it helps them to live in the world a little bit better. And um, you don't need to go too crazy. You know, you don't want to put ones randomly in the middle of each because that doesn't make sense. You know, but just scattering a few of them around and uh, you know, seeing how, you know, seeing if you can make it look a bit more like there's, there's been some, you know, tropical storms and stuff that's blown those blows away, uh, blown those around, or that they've just simply died, you know. So, yeah, now I have those on the floor. It really helped a bit to make make the world feel a bit more lived in. So what else can we add? So rocks. We don't really have any nice looking rocks right now. Um, so one of the big components we can we can add is uh, you know some bigger cliffs and rocks. Brushify comes with quite a few of those. So if you want to add those, uh, you can. Next thing is getting some, I guess, big cliffs, mountains. So I've got a few different cliff options. I've got these kind of things, they come with um, pretty much all of the Brushify packs. Uh, it's a very generic cliff. Um, I've got these huge, huge cliffs, these big modular cliffs that come with the Brushify Cliffs pack. So really realistic looking rocks. And um, I've got um, these kind of sharp looking mountaintop cliffs. It's good for a couple of things. One is the edge of the sea where you can kind of blend these into the terrain and it makes it look a bit like these kind of coastal rocks, um, which is really nice. I'll just make them a bit smaller. But yeah, these I use all the time as like little coastal rocks because they kind of stick out like coastal rocks like that. Uh, the other thing they can be used for is uh, for mountain tops. So you can scale them way, way up and use them in the distance for uh, for the sort of tops of mountains. So wherever you see that there's a sort of like, you know, this is built into the terrain here, this kind of peak here. But what we can do is we can take that and uh, we can make a better textured, higher resolution sort of background distance mesh version by just sticking this mesh directly into the terrain. And the thing with Brushify is I've made all the textures kind of, you know, they fit together quite nicely. So you don't need to really worry too much about, um, you know, whether or not they fit. So yeah, just um, just tweak that a little bit. Let's just put that around. And of course you can spin these around and change the directions of them, change the shapes of them. You can even go up and down with the scale tool to give some more variation that way. And yeah, just generally, these can be really useful. So this is how you get more shape variations and more details into your landscapes, is you kind of supplement them with a few different meshes on top. And this is all just a matter of time, you know, so you've got more time, you can spend more time tweaking and fiddling. And yeah, this is how these huge game worlds are built. They're just assemblies of lots of little assets all thrown into the same world and just usually repeated because it's cheaper to repeat the assets than it is to you know, use unique assets for every single situation. You know, so here you can see that the texture from the terrain there isn't looking that good, but now I can just kind of replace that bit with um, you know, a big cliff piece. And then, you know, maybe if there's if the player's gonna get closer to that. I would then, you know, use an even better cliff mesh underneath, like this, you know, that's then going to slot in and, and make that area now way better. And, you know, you see this ugly bit here, this bit with, you know, some disgusting, you know, stretch texture. First things first, you can go in and you can obviously go in and smooth that out. And now it's looking a lot better already. The second thing you can do is you can take that mountain piece rotate it around a bit and just slot another one maybe a smaller one right into there and uh you know just kind of cover it up a little bit and now you've got two sort of layers of mountains um that you didn't you know that you didn't have before 
Same goes pretty much everywhere. You know, you don't have to use the big pieces. You can use also these little small pieces. Um, so for little outcrops like this one, um, you can see that, you know, the terrain is kind of, it's created these nice shapes, but they don't necessarily look that good. So just kind of hide them with real geometry and then smooth out the, smooth out the terrain underneath. So basically the terrain is basically acting as your inspiration as to where the uh, geometry should be placed because the terrain has already generated these kind of nice grooves and erosions on a general sense. It knows where the rocks should be placed. It knows where the sort of lines of the natural formations should be. Um, but it's up to you, the, the artist, to you know, kind of take the height map and interpret that into a game level. And that's really what you're doing. It's your your job is to kind of take the height map and get creatively inspired by the height map, uh, you know, creatively inspired enough to build, um, you know, convincing in level geometry. So yeah, and just and usually just by reusing assets, a lot of reusing assets, because that way you'll save on performance. And you know, once you do have those kind of situations, you can just go in and you know smooth out any errors that you see so the terrain itself should be rather smooth you don't want it to be really blocky because then you know people can't walk over it in the game people can't drive vehicles over it in the game you know there are all kinds of you know all kinds of reasons why you don't want to have you know terrain that looks like let me find an example like yeah you don't want to have terrain that looks like this where there's just like you can see it you know there's just random triangles sticking out everywhere it doesn't look that good. Um, you know, if I if I go in and walk over that, if I go in and walk over that, you can see my player's going up and down, up and down, up and down, and then, oh, I found a stop, and then up and down, up and down. It doesn't actually work for gameplay. So for gameplay, it'd be better if this whole area was a little bit smoother, like this, you know? And then, uh, and then I've got a few places where I can add some, you know, big rocks and stuff. So I'll go grab one of these rocks. Slot that rock in there. Let's see if I can put that there. Maybe I'll just put a couple hidden away in the forest. And yeah. You know, and then and then I've got something that's like a smooth path that look how the smooth the player is going now doesn't have any problems if that's a car if it's a buggy if it's a quad bike whatever it's not gonna have any issue he's not gonna have any issues basically and um, yeah that's really good uh, the other thing you can do of course if you don't want to place every little rock manually so these big cliff meshes you should place manually um, because you know that they're, they're just so massive that you have to do that um, you know, they're just going to be such a massive part of the gameplay that you just need to make sure that you place those properly. However, for small boulders and stuff, um, yeah, I mean, because these also, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be running around on top of these, actually. Um, so you need to make sure that you understand where they're going to be placed and, and what they're going to be used for and how, how people can kind of platform around on them, you know. Um, but yeah, for the small rocks and boulders, we don't need to do that at all. Again, we can use the procedural foliage spawner so this one right here I'm just gonna grab another one duplicate it using alt same way I did before and uh, let's go to the procedural folder again and instead of tropical I'm gonna go in procedural I'm gonna go to uh, grasslands and then cliffs and I'm gonna use the cliffs grassland spawner and this is basically just spawning lots and lots of little rocks and stuff so Let's put that, uh, yeah, let's put that right there. Uh, maybe a little bit less here. So let's just go to that area that we were just working on. Um, okay, so now this is placed over that whole area and we're just gonna hit spawn. Let's see what it does. So yeah, and then just hit uh, simulate. And now it's added some really cool sort of supplemental rocks uh, kind of around edges and these have you know of course block the player as well so they can't run through those and um, yeah that's it's really nice because it's just extra 
you know, extra stuff that you just don't have to place now. And it's kind of added a little bit more detail. So yeah. But now it looks like we spent a lot longer on this than we really have, because there's all of this detail placed down and but it just it still feels structured because of these larger cliffs that we hand placed and that you know we kind of hand placed a few of the you know the trees and things like that these look a bit ugly up here these cliffs so I'll probably just i would just probably you know come up with some interesting shapes and designs so yeah here i was just trying to dress up the side of this mountain a little bit more just by using the distant cliff meshes is I'm going to just turn up the slope um, tiling a little bit here because I think this looks a bit low res so I think we can we can definitely improve the slope tiling just a tad um, I think it is actually in the global tiling because now we've got you know such a, a ground you know now we've got all of this stuff covering up the terrain you don't notice the tiling on the terrain as much, you know, as when you're, you know, completely, um, you know, like if I look from here as well, where's the tiling? It's gone now because we've got rid of it with paint layers and by putting foliage on top. I'm gonna tweak the lighting one last time and uh, yeah, let's see how that looks. Uh, the other thing that I noticed is the beach. Um, so the beach is a bit too uh, sandy and you can fix that by going into the MI landscape and there's actually a parameter, um, it's biome specific parameter uh, called beach brightness and you can change that so it's a little bit brighter and um, that could help you get like whiter beaches. So you know if, if your beach is looking really dull like this, um, go in there and increase the brightness a little bit and then you've gonna you're gonna have like a more white sandy beach that's uh you know a bit more similar to you know some sort of tropical beach so that's a nice little tip that's in the, the landscape material so yeah that looks like a super bright beach now whereas before it was a bit sort of lacking um okay i'm gonna put that up to 10 and then i'm gonna turn down the brightness a little bit. There we go. I think the skylight was actually good at where it was. All just a matter of tweaking. Okay, and now I'm going to give it a bit more of a sun direction because... Let's see if we can get something cool. atmospheric fog or a bit less yeah looks better with less I think it's always a problem you know people try to people try to go crazy with fog and it, it just doesn't really look like real life in that case you know um, I prefer a very 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 thin line of it Okay, cool. Of course you'd want something in the distance, like some other islands or something like that that would help um, to kind of merge the two together. Um, or the fog like this, and then yeah, I think I can actually just push the start distance out a little bit. So the start distance of the fog is way, way out, and then, and then you can use that to kind of blur out the line there. Yeah, that's better. That is better. So before and after, like, just helps to merge it all. I think the main thing that looks weird with this scene is the uh, the grass. So I'm just going to paint out the grass at the front here. And leave it completely beach. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that's much better. I'm going to grab a palm 
and I'm going to make that one um, bent, a uh, bent palm that I'm going to put in the foreground like this because I always love that shape of how the palms look always love it mm -hmm. and the ocean I'm going to tweak the colors a little bit because I think the watercolor could definitely be a little more uh, realistic. So I'm just going to tweak the ocean. And that's really just a case of like tweaking the watercolor. Uh, so it's a little bit more of a turquoise. And, uh, you know, tweaking a few things like the specular, uh, like the um, fade distance and stuff. So, yeah, now it looks a bit more like a tropical scene. Now I've got this little tropical island here that was made very very rapidly in Unreal Engine. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful, and I hope it's going to inspire you to build your own Unreal Engine 4 levels using Brushify and World Creator. Brushify packs are available on the Unreal Engine marketplace. With Brushify, you'll be able to use the landscape auto material and all of the modular assets that you've seen in this video to supplement World Creator height maps in Unreal Engine 4. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more of it, subscribe to this channel and check out Brushify on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. This is Joe Garth, signing off. Cheers.